Welcome, Welcome to, to the Eisenstein, Eisenstein effect. effect. I'm your host, Vicki Eisenstein, and this is my guest today. Hi, I'm Paul Burrell. Paul is actually an actor, a storyteller, a writer, and a singer. Tell me, have you always been like into the arts or is this something that you came to later in life? Oh, no, no, my whole life. Since I was a little kid, mm -hmm. uh, I did my first play when I was about four. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were at the recreation center where they have the little ball field behind the little community center. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was maybe four, maybe five, and a woman came out and she said, uh, we're doing a play, we're doing Robin Hood, uh -huh. and we need little boys. We're little boys, we don't know what a play is, but then she said, we have fudge brownies. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all it took. And that's great. Just hooked. bribe you into it. Bribe me with fudge brownies. I'm pretty much anything for fudge brownies. So I ended up doing that play, mm -hmm. and uh, I ended up doing plays pretty consistently until I was in my late 20s, and then mm -hmm. I left because I found that music was better money, better travel, and way easier. Really? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And music is, and I still do music, uh, but I still do theater, and, and now I make these little films, and I write these little stories. Uh, <laughs> Everything yeah. you're you're kind of diminishing here by saying little, uh, but I'm doubting that it's very little. I mean, you wrote yeah. a book, right? Yeah, that's yes. that's a massive undertaking. It, it kind of was, uh, and the funny thing is, is the book started out just to be for me. Like I wanted mm -hmm. to crack myself up, which as a writer, I mean, I, I write short stories, I write poems, I write all the time, mm -hmm. and we always say write for yourself, edit for your audience. Well, when I wrote this book, I just wanted to write something that was good, that would make me laugh. Uh -huh. And uh, somehow it became kind of a charming story. And suddenly I started to really like these people. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, it became this, this passionate project. And, well, you'll have a chance to find out because here's your copy. <laughs> My Brother's Hands, published by Lexographic Press. Thank you so much. This is awesome. So, and 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 the the cover mm -hmm. is a cover that I've dreamt about since I was about seven or eight years old. Mm -hmm. I always said I'm going to write a book, and that's what the cover is going to look like. One of my one of my things is I'm a huge Steeler fan, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm -hmm. Love the Steelers, uh, and I and all my writing for all my years, I've never touched on the Steelers. There's not a poem. There's not a song. It just never happened. Yeah. Um, but the prologue of this book juxtaposes the Immaculate Reception over the Immaculate Conception. Uh -huh. And I just now, and I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but I believe that might be the wrong year. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you can get too fixated upon like the historical details, because I know especially for me when I when if I write like historical fiction, which I'm trying to write something right now in colonial America, and I realized if I was trying to get everything accurate, like there was just no way and it would ruin the comedy. So I just gave that up. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on a. Uh, I'm also a playwright. I've written. I've had a mm -hmm. few plays published and produced. I'm working on a short play for the uh, the Kennedy Center in next spring. Is doing mm -hmm. a. Centennial on Candy's birthday. Mm. So I'm doing a short play that will hopefully get accepted. They've asked a bunch of playwrights to uh -huh. submit. Uh, and so I'm, it's it's the funeral procession and people's reactions to Johnny, little Johnny saluting. Uh -huh. So I'm trying to be really careful to, to not use language of today because yeah. that was November of 63. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, sometimes you just gotta let it go and just write it. Yeah, and it's it's that trade off of like what works best for your story versus what's appropriate to that time. Yeah, yeah I can see that being a little bit tough. But congratulations on getting asked to write that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So what other plays have you written then? Well, um, the ones that have been published recently, one is called um, Home Going, mm -hmm. and it's it takes place in Chicago, and it's about a woman who is from Inglewood, which mm -hmm. my mother was from Inglewood. And the woman, when the neighborhood shifted, the woman moved. Mm -hmm. And then as an adult, she decides she wants to go back. And yeah. her kids try to talk her out of it. Because Inglewood right now is not, you know, the, the safest place in the city. Uh, it's not as bad as Channel 5 makes it, but it's, it's not great. Gotcha. Um, and so that place has been published. It's had quite a few uh, readings and a couple of productions. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the play Great Land. It's a it's it's a brutalist. Brutalist is a style of writing that uh, there's no set, there's mm -hmm. no 
frills. It's actors on stage with chairs telling the story. Okay. In this case, it's a story of a, a burnt out Chicago writer mm -hmm. taking a boy with developmental disabilities down to uh, to Graceland to meet Elvis, and they get there the day he died. Oh wow! So that's kind of heavy, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> Uh, it's actually, there's some good humor in there. What inspired uh, that? Are you a big Elvis fan? Big Elvis fan. fan. Okay. Like, both, of them, both of them. Gotcha. Uh, I got to meet one recently, the other one, uh, not, not so much, but eventually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, if, ironically, that Elvis, Elvis Presley, finds his way into my writing probably more than any one pop culture icon. Really? Which is weird. Yeah. Just references? References, or, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, also, The Value of Horses, which is probably my favorite, is... Uh, a family, four siblings, mm -hmm. trying to kind of put their life in order now that their father has just. But mm -hmm. when, when my dad died, I started writing every play had a dead father in it. You know, yeah. So, okay, enough of that. Well, you're using uh, your life experience, yeah. clearly. <laughs> but the weird, my family kept going, you have to stop writing about dad. There's other things. I'm like, no, nah, I got one more play in me. <laughs> uh, and finally, I got rid of that, and I started writing about my mom, and then she died. I'm like, well, come on, guys, what are you doing to me? Yeah. So I can't write about family members because I want them to, to live. Gotcha. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but Value Horses actually is, is has had some success. It's been published. Uh, it's got a little lover's triangle. The two brothers fall in love with a hospice nurse, uh -huh. and the two sisters are trying to get their hands on mementos from the father. And, Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of sweet. It was at the Chopin Theater uh, for a while. Like, are you that person who sits down once a day and writes for like a set time? Or do you just kind of go with the flow when you're inspired? How do you do it? It's, it's a little of both. So I, I work on the trolley. So I, so I, mm -hmm. We drive a trolley. Oftentimes you pick people up, take them to a restaurant, and you sit for three hours. Yeah. And then you pick them up and take them home. So that three hours, I can either read, because I read voraciously, uh -huh. or I write. Oh. So... Um, oh. The play Homegoing was written in two nights, the first draft. I, I had this big party on a Saturday night, or Friday night, dropped him at the club, and I wrote Act One, and then I picked him up. Oh. And then the next night I had a different party, uh -huh. dropped them at a, at, a, at a restaurant, wrote Act Two, so. That's amazing. <laughs> everything is longhand, everything, everything uh -huh. which is why I now I have Carpal Tunnel, oh. but also because I play and, and I play and I type. So, but so you, you longer. play guitar play bass, and piano? Oh, bass. Play bass and wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. everybody can play the guitar. It's everybody true. Plays. Everybody does, right? Everybody does. So over it on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so over those six strings. I only need four. <laughs> there so. you go. Do you do, um, are you in like a jazz band or something cool? Uh, actually, I'm in a couple of rock bands. Really? But with the bands, I don't play as much. I mostly just sing. Oh. Uh, which is nice because I don't have as much gear to carry. I feel like you have a fun, unique voice for being like a rock singer. I kind of do, if I may say so myself. I, I, I like to rock it out. A lot of the old garage rock classics. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my main band right now is called The Infants. Oh. Uh, in the 80s, we like to say in the 80s, we were a little bit of a big thing. <laughs> and then we everybody went their separate ways. And oh. then a couple of years ago, we reunited and have been just doing a couple of shows here and there. Just gotcha. So... Now you mentioned that you perform at nursing homes sometimes. I do. Um, uh, so do you do that with your bands? Or? I actually don't because that would be, <laughs> scheduling would be a nightmare because sometimes it's like 11 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and you're in these homes. Uh, I have uh, music on my phone mm -hmm. and I have my own PA so I come in, plug in the PA, plug in my phone. It's called The Big Easy Show. Oh, okay. And The Big Easy Show it's uh, Frank Sinatra, uh, Dean Martin, Tony oh, Bennett, okay. Sammy Davis Jr., mm -hmm. and uh, usually I wear like like nice jeans and a tuxedo top, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, it's really it's a lot of fun. It's uh, it's people who they remember these songs. You can see when you're yeah. singing it, and you're in, and and there's a woman named Olga who's in her late 80s, whose husband worked for daily back in the 50s Ooh. <laughs> and so she she has real limited speech because of her strokes but she always finds a way to tell me little bits about chicago in the 50s oh interesting um, yeah. and i'm sure it. like you is like having driven the trolley and done the tour guide thing i'm sure yeah. you really appreciate that i too. do i do it's and it's funny because i know so much about daily mm -hmm. and she knows the other side of daily. Yeah. She knows like the personal side, mm -hmm. the side that would come by with a bottle of whiskey at Christmas, and and you know, and I know the, the side who would threaten president. Hey, you had like a whole list of accomplishments that you gave me, and I feel like I put that over here. Let me just. <laughs> 
everybody, the, well, he knows Elizabeth Taylor, who you might remember from the other week how she had that crazy long list. So, yeah, he's also got a nice list here. Okay, yeah, you've got what? Writer, actor, singer, tour guide, storyteller, driver. Bus. I can drive a double decker. Yeah. I can drive a coach bus. I can drive a trolley. I can drive anything. Is there, are there any tips for driving like a large vehicle that you would share right now if you were going to give one tip to people who want to drive one? All the mirrors all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the windshield is only a little part of your vision. Use those mirrors. Um, like a child of God you have here. So are you very religious? I am. Uh, not in a not in a uh, organized religion way. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, I don't go to church, mm -hmm. uh, but I do keep a prayer journal. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that uh, you know that I've been washed. My sins have been washed in my Savior's blood. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that all of my work is uh, I'm a vehicle through where his stories come, which is ironic because this book, mm -hmm. My Brother's Hands by Lexographic Press. Um, <laughs> I like that you keep plugging the press. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate it. <laughs> um, this book really takes jabs at organized religion. Oh. And uh, the publisher, who is a, a, a brilliant guy, he designed the cover. Mm -hmm. uh, he's what we call an atheist. Mm -hmm. um, He's going to hate that I did that, but I always do that when I say atheist, um, just to be a, a, obnoxious. Okay. Uh, and the, the irony is that he is, he is that, and he still saw the charm in this book and was able to publish it. Great. And then, of course, you have what here, like you're a father. Um, so. I have a daughter who's a psychologist. Really? Yeah. She's in L.A., which is kind of ironic. Again, my daughter, the psychologist, lives in L.A., Dad, the artist, lives in Chicago. It probably should be. Familiar. Yeah, it seems like. Well, there's plenty of people out in LA who need a psychologist. Yes, so. yes uh, <laughs> it works yes. out. And we probably know about half of them. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, what are your current projects, and what's what's happening for the future besides your play that you're writing? Uh, well, we have um, my film, The Hustle and Shuffle and Crew, which is a short uh, basketball parody video that we shot. Mm -hmm. um, just got accepted into the Texas Ultimate Short Film Festival. Awesome. So that, uh, uh, we're hoping that's going to play out. Mm -hmm. I have another film that I wrote called, and director called Prairie Melancholy, which mm -hmm. is in the final stages of post. Awesome. And um, we have a project called Hashtag Chicks Dig NFL, which is six commercials that I wrote and directed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, actually today I'll have the final approval mm -hmm. and we're just going to send them to everybody. I, I just finished the first draft of my very first graphic novel. Ooh, exciting. So I'm starting to talk to uh, illustrators? artists, illustrators. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's called The Summit of Justice mm -hmm. and it's three superheroes based mm -hmm. on uh, Rub a Dub Dub, Three Men in a Tub. Nice. So uh, <laughs> there's a, a butcher who's this big old white guy who's like the the wise guy who's about to be replaced in the uh -huh. second book. Uh, the baker is this kind of hip young black guy who uh, uh, kind of keeps it together. And then the candlestick maker is this little red haired girl who is like the kind of the hope. And mm -hmm. the idea, believe it or not, there's been like papers written on Rub a Dub Dub. Really? Like people get really get into it. And it really, uh, the more I researched it, the butcher is kind of the power like he'll do anything he will mm -hmm. claw you know cleave off your arm if that's going to solve the thing gotcha and the baker is like well i'll make do with what i have i mm -hmm. have these things i want to make something great yeah. out of what i have and the candlestick maker is the hope is the light is the mm -hmm. illumination and i had created all this in my stories and then i started the research and apparently this is not I, i'm not breaking any ground other people mm -hmm. thought these things I don't think anybody's put them into... Like the scenarios and the context right. that you have, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I think so. that's kind of like a really cool way to get inspired and to make a story is to take something that's kind of like, you know, an old nursery rhyme or a tale and then you kind of reinvent it. Yeah. So I think that's an awesome well, way great. to do that. Great. I love that. Uh, do you have any advice for anybody who is interested in like starting playwriting or starting, but you know, it's just a lot. It's like, a lot. It's yeah. a lot. Well, the, depending on where you are, uh, geographically, um, one bit of advice is take my classes at Harper College <laughs> or College of DuPage. Because those are go. great. College of DuPage, Harper College. Wait, um, why isn't that on here that you're like a, a teacher professor person? I didn't, I know. I was going to, I forgot to put that and I forgot to put filmmaker. Okay. Well, well I, I, you know, I don't want to get too. Next uh, time that you order cards. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna, we'll, add, we'll add those. Okay. Um, but really, there's a, a, a book called The Writer's Journey. It's by Chris Vogler. 
-hmm. You buy that book and you buy Dramatist Toolkit by Jeffrey Sweet. Mm -hmm. You have those two books, you never need to take a class. Really? You just read those books. They talk about structure. And everything you read, every book, every movie, every, it follows the writer's journey. Yeah. Uh, it's the 12 steps. It's the ordinary world, call to action, refuse to call. Everyone's got it. Mm -hmm. And if you use Vogler's book as a template, that's all you need. Uh, and then you just write. I write, sometimes I'll write for hours. Sometimes I can only write for 20 minutes or half an mm -hmm. hour. And I'm like, uh. Yeah. But just write every day. Every day, just write something, you know. It's that daily uh, discipline. Yeah. Yeah. I've, okay. never, I've never not written. Um, I have a poetry blog. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a flash fiction blog. Um, but the flash fiction blog, it's not kept blog, it's not really catching on. I think it might be a little too weird. Flash fiction, that's like really like super like tweet length stories or something. A right? little or... longer. Like like mine is, uh, mine is, uh, it's called uh, Two of Cups, mm -hmm. a paranormal love story. And every chapter is one paragraph. Main thing to plug, of course, is your book. Ah, My Brother's Hands, published by Lexographic Press. <laughs> And do you have a Twitter? I do. It's Lyric Alone. Instagram is word.dude. Just, just all over the place. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Great. All right. So, yeah. So, check out his stuff. Also, make sure that you head over to my website, www.vickyeisenstein.com, where you can check out all of the stuff I've been doing lately and the catch up on the previous episodes. It's got links to the SoundCloud or the iTunes or the Stitcher for this podcast, as well as to the videos on YouTube. Also head over to the YouTube if you're not there already. Are you subscribed? You should be. Also check out my Twitter at Vicki Ironstone or for this podcast at Eisenstein EFCT. Great. Thank you so much for watching or listening and thank you for being on, Paul. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Take care. Thanks. Take care.